Our next caller is Andrew from Iowa. What's up, Andrew? How can we help you? Not much. Um, originally, I was going to call in and talk about, I like to, I, I've always liked to run. I've always liked to lift. I know, especially listening to your recent podcast, uh, when you're on the Mark Bell uh, podcast, I really know I need to like cut back on the running. Um, so I need to focus on the lifting. I think I've always been a little skittish about my running or about my lifting uh, is because I have, I have an ostomy, uh, kind of similar to a person I, that you guys interviewed recently who had, uh, had the hernia. So it's going to be something similar. I have Crohn's disease. I know uh, nutrition kind of plays a part in that. Mm -hmm. I'm just kind of would like to pick your guys' brain, see if you guys trained anybody who has an ostomy. I mean, I squat, I deadlift, um, I wear a lifting belt um, probably more often than not because of uh, that abdominal surgery and just really wanted your guys' thoughts on that. Yeah, um, so I have, and uh, it really you have to just monitor your intensity. And this, this, by the way, is true for any... You said you have Crohn's, so any autoimmune issue can get flared up if stress or you know, overtraining becomes present. Like you push yourself too hard, you pro you can increase your risk of getting more flare ups because, of course, that's inflammation, right? It's chronic inflammation; it'll contribute right. to right. what you have before. So, really, just monitor the intensity and treat exercise like practice. So, don't go to the gym to work out, but rather go to the gym to practice exercises. This will serve you well long term. So that's the thing that I would really focus on. As far as diet is concerned, I'm sure you've probably been talked to till, you know, your 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 ears are, are bleeding about all the different ways you can work, you know, eat and how you should avoid certain foods or whatever. The the most success I've had with clients who've had uh kind of these uh you know gastro inflammatory type disorders, whether it be Crohn's or even other types of issues like colitis, uh carbohydrate specific diet, I'm sure you've heard about this. Um, but I've had clients with good success. Here's the, the issue. You have to be extremely consistent. Uh, when you go off, sometimes what can really fool people is they'll go off and be like, oh, I'm okay. I think I can kind of squeeze in a little bit of you know more bread or I can have a little bit of candy. And then boom, you get a flare up and then it takes months to get it to come back and, under control or you have to get on medication. So it's exercise, really focus on practice, keep the intensity moderate and then diet, you have a different motivation than a lot of people who are just trying to get leaner and whatnot. You got to be very consistent with staying away from the foods that tend to cause you problems. Extremely consistent because even if you eat them and you notice no immediate issues, uh, it's oftentimes setting you up for issues uh, in the near future. Andrew, are, are you currently strength training right now? And, and if you are, what does it look like? Um, yeah, right now I'm training, you know, trying to do full body uh, at least three, four times a week. Um, I, at one point, um, I was lifting and running, you know, six days a week, the running was just ki killing me, absolutely draining me. I was always a big fan. If you guys ever remember the Bill Phillips body for life program, yep. Yep. that's how I got, that's how I got into working out. And I just always have leaned, leaned heavily on that. I know, you know, having three kids working, I can't do it all. I know. And plus I, I kind of realized that I'll never get those gains or um, aesthetics if I keep running as much as I did. Uh, so it's finally just kind of realizing, hey, calm, you know, calm that down, rest, recover, especially with uh, with my Crohn's, my ostomy, all of that. Um, and, but yeah, I have a home gym at home, um, pretty nice little setup um, from the pandemic and uh, work out, you know, two, three times a week. Yeah. Now, are you uh, are, are you pretty good about switching up, like phasing the workouts? I mean, are you have you ever followed any of our MAPS programs? Are you familiar on how we periodize the, the programs? Or do you do any of that yourself? Or do you kind of follow uh, no. us? Go ahead. No, um, I've been following you guys uh, for the past couple months, um, still learning uh, uh, the different MAPS programs, what that's all about, and uh, just really getting into it. Yeah, I, I would love to see you follow like MAPS Anabolic. I think MAPS Anabolic, uh, two day, it has an option of two or three days a week. Um, if you're if you're scaling back on the running and you're not doing that, I think three days a week is is perfectly fine and doable. If you still were going to integrate running in there, I'd probably scale you back to the, to two times a week. Yeah. Uh, and and follow that routine. And I would even start in the pre phase uh, first and then move into the phase one after that. Even though I know you have some background. Uh, that type of programming, I think, would be ideal yeah. for where you're at. Yeah, I, I would go, look, to be more specific, two days a week of full body strength training and then two or three 10 to 15-minute walks every single day. That's it. So two, 
two or three walks after you eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That actually helps with digestion. It helps reduce inflammation. Perfect for you. And it gives you that extra activity, which is healthy. Two days a week of full body resistance training. And then if you want to do any more uh, mobility work, that's what I would do. You could do mobility work every single day where you, you, you go into your facility, your gym, you get a stick, you could do stick type mobility exercises. You could do prime pro type mobility and correctional exercise stuff. You could do that every single day. And then of course, like I said, the diet, the sleep, all that stuff. If you do that consistently, I think you will see your body progress mm -hmm. on a pretty consistent basis. And consistency is a key and frequency and, and to, to kind of overcome, you know, maybe some of the hesitancy towards uh, lifting weights. It's you don't have to go in there and, and, you know, try, try to, you know, add load every single time and, and really increase intensity, really just like practice, you know, these movements and keep consistent with and frequent. You're going to get the gains as a result of just doing it uh, more often. Perfect. And I know with me, yeah, it's, um, it's that, it's that diet component. Um, I have to, the way my body's structured, I have to stay on a almost paleo diet it works well for me. And as soon as I introduce more carbs in there, I swell up like a balloon. Yeah. Yeah. Are you familiar with the carbohydrate specific diet? I am not. Oh yeah. Look that up. Look that up. They've had Look a up. lot of success with people with Crohn's. So, and it's kind of similar to what you're probably already doing. Uh, so I'd look that up and you're and, and just see how you feel, but I, that's the biggest thing, man. I, that's look, what it's called, carbohydrate-specific diet? Yeah, and I, it, I've had, look, I have a, a godson who's got really bad Crohn's. Um, I have my own gut issues. At one point, I thought my, maybe I had that. Luckily, I don't. I've worked with clients who've had colitis and Crohn's, and uh, boy, I'll tell you, man, the consistency is everything with this. Like, And I know how hard it is because it's like you're doing well. Wow, my body feels good. I don't have any signs of Crohn's inflammation's down, everything looks good. Then you have like one cookie or one thing that's off the thing. And then you're like, I feel good. No, it didn't affect me. Let me try a little bit again. It did affect you and it's this cumulative effect. And then what happens, I'm sure you've experienced this as you push it, push it, push it. Boom, you get a, a flare up and then it takes you a while to I go mean, back. I mean, this is true for all autoimmune. I mean, this what you're saying right now, I know we're, we're talking about Crohn's, but I mean, I experienced this with my psoriasis, exactly that same thing. And I do it to myself all the time. Oh my God, I'm doing so good. I'll allow some ice cream in there. I don't, yeah. I can get away with one, two, oh, third time. Now I'm fucked. You know what I'm yeah. saying? My sister, endometriosis, same thing. She's, oh good, I've eliminated sugar. Everything's good. I'm fine. Oh, I had some candy the other day. I was totally fine. Have some more, a little bit yeah. more. And then it, boom, it comes. And so that's, I think that's the mistake a lot of people make that have autoimmune is you do a really good job of dieting. You're feeling really good. You go back to trying some of the things that were you, what you what were offenders before, and then you don't see anything. And so you think, oh, well, maybe it's not that, or maybe I can have that more yeah. often. And, and then it ends up flaring up. Yep. 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 No, but absolutely. I was, uh, thought I was feeling better. The medication was working, started changing my diet. And then boom, next thing I know, I'm in the uh, hospital. They removed my colon. Yep. And I think I learned my lesson. Yeah, yeah. no, it's a, yeah, it's, that's, a, that's a tough situation. But mm -hmm. yeah, do it now and uh, you, you should be okay. And I'm assuming the medication they put you on was a very strong immune suppressing drug. Very strong, yes. Yeah. And, yeah. Andrew, I'm going to have Doug uh, send over MAPS Anabolic for free to you. So he's going to shoot that over to you. Awesome. Thank you so much, guys. No problem. Awesome. Yeah, the, the drugs that they put uh, people like this on are they're like chemo drugs, chemotherapy, mm. and they oh, really? they attack, they are, and they'll attack your immune system to suppress this reaction. But what you look at the side effects of these drugs increases your risk of cancer and other things down the future. They're really kind of a last resort. And I know I'm sure I'm talking to somebody right now who's listening who's like, man, you don't know how hard it is. Like I like I totally get it. But you don't have normally we communicate flexibility with people. When you're in a situation like this, you don't have any. You right. don't have the luxury of that kind of. Yeah. And as you can see, he had to have. Oh, no, this is the conversation. I, put this in. is the conversation that I have with my sister with endometriosis because how how awful that is for her. You have to become she, almost like spiritual neurotic. with it. Like yeah, neurotic. like it, like it's your religion. Like yeah. I can't eat that. I have to eat this yeah. particular way. Yeah. You know.